buds, it is I, your local farmer gal, Haley Senpai. Yeehaw! What some people I don't think know about me is that I live on a farm. Yes, with the real moo moo cows and everything. So that might be why I find myself playing these farming simulator games, you know, like the Harvest Moon installments or the focus of today's video, Stardew Valley. You know, I love the idea of building my own farm with different animals, planting a whole lot of cool crops, and the best part, dating hot characters. <laughs> yes, I'm a simp through and through. <laughs> I'm lonely. Anyways, if this has piqued your interest, let's jump into it. Now, although I wanted to show you guys my awesome farm that I already made in my previous save file, because, you know, I'm just a veteran of a gamer, uh, let's just start a new game, just so then we can all be on the same page. So, first things first, character creation. Where other games like this make people uninterested with giving you a character already designed to play as, Stardew allows you to create your own character. Albeit the style being a little pixelated, it still allows you to choose however you want your character to look. Although, it doesn't have the Haley Senpai Not Very Pogger sweater that you can get at flashfomo.com slash Haley Senpai to tell everyone that you are a pro gamer farmer and don't have time for anyone that isn't going to be very pog in your life. I mean, I guess we'll settle and see if we can still find a cute single person to be farm spouses with, with this general selection. So here you get to put in your name or whatever name you want your farmer to be recognized as. You get to choose the name of your farm, choose a fluffy companion to keep you company, and choose your favorite thing. I put sexy anime boy titties. They won't let me show the whole thing, so okay. Plus, you get to pick what kind of farmland you want to live on. So this is your standard farm. It's good for your basic stuff like raising animals and growing crops. Perfect for if this is your first time playing and want to get the basics down before jumping into another save. This one is the Riverlands Farm. The layout is best for your fishing niche, but still leaves you room to add your own barn or coop and add some crops if you so desired. Here, we got the Forest Farm. Good for gathering stuff for your building materials while leaving you some room to decorate. Though you might struggle with clearing and gathering it all since your axe will need to upgrade or two before you can deal with the bigger trunks. Here, we have the Hilltop Farm. This is where all your mining will kind of be thriving. Hey, that kind of rhymed. The hilltop spawns stones, ores, and geodes, mostly based on your mining level. Although it seems bigger, it doesn't have a lot of room for adding buildings or really have a big farm. Next, we have the wilderness farm. Although it's pretty similar to the standard farm, the main difference is that monsters spawn during the night. Their difficulty is based on your combat level, so there isn't too much to worry about in regards to what you can handle. Now here's the Four Corners farm, which is more of catered to a multiplayer save. This gives you a little bit of everything in each corner that the previous farms had. So yeah, it's good for if you have different players with different things they want to do, or if you just want a big farm with a little bit of everything, totally up to you. The newest addition to the farms is the beach farm. This farm offers your foraging and fishing needs based on a beach, I guess, is pretty telling. Um, but there's a lot of sand, so you gotta be careful where you plant your crops because sprinklers don't work in the sand. And you know, ocean water isn't great for plants. Just for the sake of consistency, I'm gonna go with the standard farm because it's really what you should go with if you're just starting out. Otherwise, I do the hilltop one because it seems hella pretty. That about covers our character creation, so let's get off to our backstory. I mean, finally! So our Grandpa Dearest is sick in this not-so-stable or nice-looking bed. Oh my god, someone please give Grandpa a better-looking bed! It's gonna collapse on him! He gives us a letter that says not to open it until we're feeling pretty depressed. I mean, <laughs> that's why I'm playing this game. What the hell, Grandpa? Fast forward to a few years later. We are seen in everyone's nightmare of an office cubicle job. Holy shit, that guy is literally dead. I I have some concern. God, was that the human resources rep? Oh my God, we, we gotta get out of here. The good thing is that we took good old granddad's letter to work with us, and this is our moment of need. Turns out, grandpa left us a farm for us to take over. Boy, that sounds like a good time. After dipping from Joja Corp, the seventh ring of hell, we are on our way to Stardew Valley. Hey, that's the name of the game. We're gonna hop off the bus and be greeted by Robin. Hi, Robin, how you doing? You'll learn that she is the local carpenter for the town. Robin leads you to your old grandpa's farming cot- HOLY FUCK GRANDPA! 
This place is an abandoned wasteland. How how long were you gone? God, no wonder your bed was literal twigs. Anyways, his old buddy Lewis, who is the mayor of Pelican Town, that's the town to your left of your farm, he was just fixing up Granddad's cottage for your arrival. How does he have a key, I wonder? Hmm. He comes out and banters with Robin, making you think that she's kind of not the nicest person and only cares about giving you her house upgrades. We appreciate the old vintage stuff. Sure, Robin. Lewis suggests that we get some rest and introduce ourselves to the local townsfolk tomorrow. So, um, we do that. Raz and Sean Buckaroo, the rooster that you do not own but somehow is there, wakes you up. When you wake up, you get to see your new home. It's small. But it has everything you need to get started. Lewis, the kind guy, left you some seeds that you can put in your crops later. Anyway, look, you have a TV. And surprisingly, it still works. Your TV has a few channels on it. Most often, that will be on is the Weather Channel and an Oracle Channel. The Weather Channel, guess what? Tells you about the weather for tomorrow, Weather. And then the Oracle Channel will tell you what luck you'll have for that day. I find these two that have the most important information that you will need in order to plan your day. I mean, the Weather Channel, like I said before, tells you the weather. But guess what? If it's raining tomorrow, you don't have to water your crops. That'll be dope as hell. And the Oracle Channel, guess what? Your luck is important because it increases your chances of finding good things in like mining or in fishing or, you know, things that I'll explain later and it'll make more sense later. You have two other channels on your TV. One is the Queen of Sauce and the other is Living Off the Land. The Queen of Sauce gives you some recipes to use later on in the game when your house is upgraded and you have a kitchen. Because right now, you are a starving person. Deal with it. You're gonna have to eat grass. You know, like a moo moo cow. Don't actually eat grass, I don't think it's good for you. Living off the land gives you some key hints about the town and its surrounding area's environment. The host will tell you about when berry bushes will be ripe enough for you to go berry picking, or when there's an influx of seashells on the beach, or when there's a high amount of forgeable items around in a certain area. It helps out when you're kinda broke, like you are now, and you don't have any way to get some income. So yeah, foraging will be your righteous way. Cowabunga. All right, main gameplay, let's go. You can use your garden hoe to dig up some spots for your parsnips and plant them. And just so you know, uh, using both your watering can and your hoe will take up a lot of energy, um, you know, because you have to build up your endurance by building up your skills. While we are on the topic of energy level, here it is, this is your bar, the green thing, the green thing. When it's green, it means good. If it's red, that means you're dying. Well, not dying, you just will pass out. Um, anyways, every time you use one of your tools, it takes a certain amount of points away from your energy. Once you hit zero energy left, you will pass out from exhaustion. Please do your best to avoid this because if you pass out anywhere outside of your house, you'll be fined money and may lose some items from your inventory to bring your energy back up. You'll need to consume some food or else, you know, go to sleep. You also have a curfew. Um, be home by 2 a.m. or you will fall asleep and be robbed. And guess what? It'll be your fault. Now that that's over with, let's complete one of our first main tasks, meeting the townspeople. Um, I didn't realize that we were a bit early. Nothing is open. Oh, look, a friend! This is Shane. He's a, he's a real delight. Past the rude and grumpy attitude, he's just gonna get used to you before you start seeing him light it up. Yeah, that, that takes a while, but luckily I am persistent. Oh look, another possible friend! This is Gus, he runs the Star Drop Saloon, where he cooks food and serves drinks. He's kind of like the local caterer for the town's events. Befriending him will result in Gus giving you a lot of tasty recipes that you'll have to try out for yourself. Down over here is Penny! She's a shy and quiet type of gal and has some awkward and limited dialogue with you when you're first interacting with her, but later on you'll learn that she loves to read and teaches the young kids of the town like a volunteer teacher because apparently there isn't a school nearby! Lewis, what the fuck? 
All right, yo, it is prime time, 9 a.m. Things are opening up, so let's go meet some people. Let's uh, let's go into the clinic first, because I always forget that exists. Let's just go say hi and not really buy anything. Um, let's take the back door, because that's normal and polite. He, he doesn't seem to mind. This is Dr. Harvey, a polite fellow who just happens to fill the only doctor in the town role that I'm used to seeing. My mother goes for your type in these types of games. Not much else to say about him other than he's kind of quirky. And he likes planes. Yeah. Okay, let's go check out the next door business. Pierre's, the convenience store. I don't know what to call it. Uh, there's the boss man behind the counter. Pierre, who is uh, friendly enough to correct me and say it's a general store that he owns. Same thing. Anyways. This is the place where you're going to buy your stock of seeds for the season. The selection changes once the season ends. Also sold here are fruit tree saplings and holy crap, that is expensive. Not nice for the wallet. They have wallpaper and flooring options as well as some basic baking ingredients. Now let's break into the house portion of this place and meet Pierre's family. In the kitchen, we got Pierre's daughter, Abigail, who is a little disappointed that you moved in because she used to trespass on your grandpa's farm to go exploring. Yeah, classy. She's into her adventuring, fantasy, and goth stuff. I'm assuming that's why her hair is purple, because I ain't seen any resemblance between her dad or her mom there, so, you know. Anyway, speaking of her mother, next to her in the green hair is Pierre's wife and Abigail's mom, Caroline. Who fills us in and what we already know? Sorry, I was in a rush to meet everybody and that was a little pointless. Your daughter is literally right there, but... It was nice to meet you. Zooming out of there fast. Oh, look, another townsperson. This is Marnie, who happens to be Shane's aunt, and he happens to live with her on the farm. That neighbor's yours. Don't worry, you guys aren't in competition because, let's face it, you're not really much of a competition for a while. Anyways, Marnie specializes in farm animals. She takes care of a lot of them and has some for sale on her farm, along with the tools you'll need when you're ready to take care of them. She's a lot more friendly than her nephew, which is nice hearing considering his first impression wasn't too great. Um, before we move on, can I just say that this character model is freaking tall? Like, I personally can't admit that I am short in stature, and sometimes I'm okay with that. My video game life should be imitating my real life. Like, I am so big that it makes me uncomfortable to see people at eye level now. Anywho, I kind of not wanted to do this, but let's just break into people's houses because I want this quest task over and done with so I can move along. Um, this house is home to someone I have been very fond of in my last playthrough of this game. Sometimes I forget his name. I want to say his name's Taylor. No, Ethan... Samuel, um, whatever, he's in his room. Let's go meet his mom first. This nice lady is Jody. I'm not what you expected. What? Were you assuming I'm some Texan Alabama looking boy with the tan wearing only overalls and the straw hat with a piece of chew straw hanging from my mouth? Huh? I'm not taking it personally because your son is cute. And in another lifetime, we were soulmates. Also in the kitchen is one of Jody's other sons, Vincent. He is so funny because he doesn't really understand things like kids usually do but he's great and cute little guy he has a special place in my heart he's like a lemon or not a lemon a melon boy now on to the big brother of the house I, I still don't remember his name okay blondie let's open the door i'm ready to meet you dude come on open up sir 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 let me finish this goddamn quest and open the door okay let's pretend to leave and oh okay now he's coming this super saiyan looking dude is named Sam. I was close. He's a music man. Y'all know I got a soft spot for music men. Sam is actually pretty polite and is pretty chill when compared to the other people that still wander this town unintroduced. He makes them all at work. Um, he's kind of a little scatterbrain, not really great at remembering things, but it adds to his charms. All right, let's go check out next door. Let's walk in and see who's around. Oh, your name's Haley. Huh. Well, actually, with that attitude, we'll be calling you Hallie. There can only be one! Whatever, I'm the cooler Haley. Okay, Hallie here is kind of a snooty... Never mind, she's an actual bitch. She's from the usual city girl life, where she's obsessed with her appearance, and really anything she finds aesthetically pleasing. Huh, not doing it for me. You're still my least favorite character. Okay, let's try your sister. Allie, open up! I hate your sister! 
Okay, okay, that didn't work. Whatever, we'll try again when she's at work. Okay. <sighs> Perfect. Right here is Leah. Leah. Um, she's neighbors with Marnie. She makes sculptures and has a keen eye for art. She's kind of my best friend. <laughs> uh, you know, or maybe we'll pursue her. I don't know what I'm going to do with this save file. <laughs> Okay, let's go down to the beach next. Nice timing. This long-haired fellow is Elliot. He's very fancy fancy. He's also an author living out here on the beach for inspiration for his next novel. He's making me miss having long hair. I'm a little jealous, but I'm not going to tell him that. Okie dokie, that's all the beach has to offer us today. So let's head back into town and check out the right-hand side of things here. Over here is a library run by Gunther, who explains to you that the last person running the library slash museum took all the artifacts and ran away with them. Assumingly, selling them all. That sucks. Okay, bye! Up here is the blacksmith ran by this fella named Clint. He's kind of awkward, not really into socializing as much as the other people in town, but he's a nice guy. All right, we still got some people to meet, so let me show you around more. Up here is... Crap, the devil has followed us. Nope, not interacting with that. This game doesn't amend it, so bye. Okay, into this nice house over here in the wheelchair is George, an older fellow. He is an old resident of the town. He's a little grumpy, but what senior doesn't have their moments? He lives here with his lovely wife, Evelyn, who isn't here at the moment, but we'll find her. George also lives here with his grandson. Well, hello there. Did somebody say strong? Oh, wait, this might take longer than Sam. Let's come back to Ab's man later. We absolutely have to be. <laughs> oh, God, I'm terrible. <laughs> oh, there's Evelyn. She is just so wholesome and deserves to be ranked high on any friendship list because she is an angel. Evelyn kind of takes care of her husband lots and also loves to take care of the town's flowers. She's great at it. Befriending her will end up in her sending you nice letters and some gardening tips later on. Okie dokie, that's kind of the majority of people who live down here. Let's head up north and to the mountains to meet the mountain people who aren't really mountain people. They just live in the mountains. Yeah. Oh wait, there's a person. My timing in this save is pretty convenient. This lovely lady is Maru. She's a very enthusiastic chick who loves to invent and study things. Uh, you'll see when we meet him, but she gets most of her scientific aspirations from her father. Speaking of, there he is! Perfect! The dude staring at the plant is Demetrius. He's Maru's dad and happens to be Robin's husband. Nice! He's kind of a scientist living in Pelican Town to study the environment, plants, and creatures. He's a very polite dude. Heading into their home, let's pop a quick chat with Robin. Yeah, you have no idea how exhausting it is to try and meet everyone on the first day. It usually takes me a good three days because your son holds himself up in his room for God knows how long. And oh, wait, he's right here. What the hell? You're the one who usually gives me the most grief. My chemical romance over here is Sebastian. Local emo bad boy. I almost said emu. <laughs> emu boy. <laughs> In case his dialogue was too vague for you, he's not much of a fan of Pelican Town. Despite being a loner who would rather smoke a cigarette in the dark and stand alone when it rains, he's actually good friends with Abigail and Sam. I love me a trio of two goths slash emos and one happy optimistic blonde. It's, it's quite the dynamic. <laughs> All right, let's head on. Oh, God dang. I almost forgot about the homeless guy. He's usually around. Yep, yeah, right by his tent. That is Linus, local homeless man. <laughs> he's a little wary of you, so he doesn't offer much to say. But I mean, at least he's polite. Okay, heading back into town. Let's try and meet up with Strong's. Perfect timing. Muscle man over here is Alex. He's a little arrogant and cocky with the love of sports and training. Typical jock man. He has his moments where he's actually kind of nice and friendly, but there are a lot of other times where it's like maybe he should get smacked by his grandma or grandpa. Yeah, George would probably smack him with a newspaper. He should. If not, I will. I will do it. I volunteer as tribute. Alrighty, do we have everyone yet? Uh, dang, not really. Opening the menu, here's a little cute little trick I have. We can scroll to our friend list and scroll down and see who we're missing. I think these are ranked by how friendly the person is with their introduction and how we're getting close to them. Yeah. We're heading to the saloon. Here is Emily, who works part-time here with Gus. She's Haley's sister, as I mentioned earlier. Emily is given the weird one title because she's into the crystal healing and aura stuff. I mean, 
That sounds like the normal part, but otherwise she's just on a different vibe, let's just be nice and say. Alright, let's try and venture out and see who else we can find. Here's Pam! She is Penny's mom, heading to the saloon for a nightly drink. She's one of those sassy, take no crap from anyone, trailer park women, so uh, don't cross her. I feel like not waiting for whoever's left, so let's head to Marnie's shop to greet another child. This little girl is named Jazz. She's actually Marnie's niece, but isn't related to Shane. She's actually his goddaughter. Anyway, she's a super shy kid who's around the same age as Vincent, so they are all buddy buddies. She likes learning how to handwrite. That, that's all I know about her. She jumps rope too! I don't know! So, uh, let's head back home. Oh my god, this mess is making me mad. Uh, let's see how much energy we can burn and get some building materials before we hit the hay. See, when you start out with, uh, energy points, you have 270. Unfortunately, not every hit takes away just one point. It actually is a few more. So until you get your energy boosted and your tools upgraded, you better keep an eye on your energy or else, as I mentioned earlier, you will pass out and get robbed and it will be your fault. My strategy here on the first day is to kind of just gather enough wood and craft a chest. This way I can store all my building materials here without worrying about my inventory getting too full. This way we can avoid rationing what items we collect and make way too many trips back to our shipping bin. Speaking of, once we get into bed, whatever was put into the shipping bin for that day is calculated for you. And then we get to use that money for the next day! Hooray! Raz and Sean, buckaroo, it's a new day! We got a letter in the mail! What is this? Willie, the local fisherman, just got back from a month-long fishing trip, and he wants to meet us. So let's water our plants and head down to the beach. Hello, sir. Where boat? A fisherman. Where boat? Boat of man who fish. How the fuck were you able to fish for a month without a boat? Anyway, yada yada yada, you get a fishing rod, so let's test it out. Um, fishing is not my most favorite thing in this game because you gotta keep this green bar on the fish and then this bar to the right when the fish will go up and then it reaches the top and then you cut the fish. It's, it's complicated for me to explain, but fishing was and still is the bait of my existence. My, always, my eyes always defocus because I concentrate too much on the fish and the bar and sometimes I lose the fish and suffer and then my eyes are dry because I was just staring at it trying to catch it and it's just, it ruins my day for the rest of the game day. While watching over the footage, I noticed that every time you press the button, your character moves, which is kind of funny to watch, so one good thing comes from it. <laughs> Something else worth mentioning about fishing is that sometimes it will result in you catching things like garbage, but what else is neat is that you can sometimes catch artifacts or minerals, mostly through like a treasure chest added in the minigame, but catching both the fish and the chest will give you some cool rewards. Um, the more you fish, the higher your skill gets, and the longer the green... Well, <laughs> this is hard to explain. The longer the green bar is on the fish, the easier to catch your fishies, because it'll get bigger, the more your skill goes up, and then the more your skill goes up, the more you can catch the fish easier, and then it'll be a perfect fish, and then the quality will go up, and then yeah! That is... That probably could have been worded better, but this game stresses me out when it comes to fishing. <laughs> anyway, I am doing good for once. Screw this mini game! I came here to farm, and I run a sushi restaurant! Oh, that that's nice, Lewis. Wait, Grandpa's bed... Grandpa didn't complain about his bed once, and did you see that rickety thing in his deathbed? Like, it was toothpicks. He didn't complain once. How would you even know? This sounds scandalous. Am I supposed to call you grandpa's boyfriend or? Before we fully leave the whole uh, fishing category topic, um, let me just run around and show you all the fishing spots you have access to. Anything that's really a body of water usually works, but the smaller it is, the more likely you'll catch some garbage is what I found. It should go without saying, but each fishing spot has their own fish populations and types. Some fish are always around no matter the time or the season, but most of them come out during specific seasons, weather, or the specific time of day. For more answers, I definitely recommend checking out the Stardew Valley Wiki if you're struggling a bit, because I definitely did and I feel like I'm cheating. I briefly mentioned this before, but this is your menu. This is where you can keep track of your inventory, more specifically clothes, equipment, and what's in your rucksack. It also shows your total farm's earnings, which is kind of cool to keep track of. 
these are your skills. This is where you can see how high your levels are with farming, mining, foraging, fishing, and combat. With these, they can rise by selling products within their category or by using the specific tool for that skill. Sell animal products and crops to raise your farm skill. Hit stones with your pickaxe and sell gems and minerals for your mining skill. Sell forage items for your foraging skills. Catch and sell fish to raise your fishing skill. And kill and sell monster loot for your combat skill. It's kind of, kind of a given, but sometimes you never know. Just thought I'd explain it. Next is your relationships. So whoever you're most friendly with will be at the top of your list and the people you ignore will be at the bottom of the list. You know, where they belong. It's like your personal popularity rank. <laughs> As you may have noticed, some of the names in the brackets there read single, meaning that you have the option to romantically pursue them. You know, you can go stargazing with the homies, yo. <laughs> for this game, it doesn't matter what gender you put for your character, you can date either the bachelors or the bachelorettes, whichever we dig. So your options being Alex, Sam, Abigail, Sebastian, Haley, Penny, Shane, Harvey, Leia, Elliot, Maru, and Emily. A basic rundown of how to increase your friendships, some friends to lovers, you know, whatever you want. And it helps to talk to the townspeople every day. That little bit goes a long way, especially if you don't know what to gift that certain person. Some of them are rare, and some of them are hard to attain, so you gotta just talk. You know, you gotta build a connection um, instead of giving gifts, because of course you do. <laughs> to find out what the characters like and dislike, it helps to talk to other people they usually hang around, like friends and family. For example, you could talk to Pierre, Caroline, Sam, or Sebastian to learn more about what Abigail likes. Once you gift a character something, going back into the menu, you can click on that character and see their birthday, the loved gifts, liked gifts, neutral gifts, and disliked gifts. So you kind of have a reference for next time or what to get them, you know. And also, something important to note is that you can only gift a character a present twice a week. Because you cannot speedrun a relationship, I guess. That's what I do for my other games, but whatever. Next, we have your map, which will show everyone's houses and businesses. You'll be able to click on the certain building you want, and then you can see the hours or who lives there. You know, just for a reference, it's good to have handy if you're in a rush and you forgot when Pierre's is opened or what time the museum is open so you can donate crap. Here we have your crafting section where you can view the recipes to make appliances and decorations for your farm. Anyway, next is the collections list so you can see everything you've collected or sold. Crops wise, fish wise, artifacts wise, minerals wise, recipes wise, letters wise. Yeah, clicking any of them will give your basic information of the item. Lastly is your settings menu. Change whatever you need to. It's more just depends on what makes your gameplay more comfortable for you. Like for me, I always put on the automatic run because getting stuck on things is a waste of time. Did I wait till half an hour of the video to start the main storyline? Yes. Not on purpose, but I did. <laughs> now, a few days after you arrive, exactly after day five on a sunny day, you will go into town. You'll have a cutscene where you have Lewis standing in front of an abandoned building. Lewis, Lewis, I just wanted to buy some overly priced seeds from Pierre. Okay, I guess we're humoring him. Lewis explains that this rundown building is the community center. Well, what was the community center? But them darn kids in front of the TVs and their electronics shut the damn thing down because they never used it. Huh, it's always the goddamn kids, am I right? <laughs> Lewis says that Joja Corp is trying to sell the area to build a factory there. You know, replace the old building. But he says that if one single person buys a membership from Joja, he'll give in and sell it. Oh, and of course, that one person is going to be me. Right? Glad that didn't give me a timeline of anything but my patience! Lewis then unlocks the door and shows you how nature decided to decorate the place. Yeah, it could use some work, but greenery is always nice. What is that? A walking green bowl? A little teacup? What, what do you mean you didn't see it, Lewis? It was right there. There, there it is again! R rats? A rat problem. Are you serious? How long have you been mayor of this place and not have some fund in place to repair this building? You literally have a carpenter to fix it and force upon force everywhere to offer materials. I have several questions and they're all about your judgment. So according to Lewis, apparently this rat problem is suddenly our problem. Right, because this isn't an issue anymore, but an ish me. Because that seems fair to dump all your problems on the new girl, huh? <sighs> Whatever. After the cutscene, if you go check out this rat problem, quote-unquote, there you have some kind of cute little- Oh, it's gone. 
Oh, look, a brick. Oh, oh God, who slammed on the ancient keyboard when making this? Yeah, I'm gonna need a translator to see what this is. So let's move on with the day. Okay, the next morning we'll just get a letter. Oh, it's from the wizard, the one person we have left to meet. Everyone kind of calls him the wizard. His first name begins with an M and his last name is Rasmodi. Wait, unless that means Master Rasmodius. I'm dumb. Anyway, he figures that we've been checking out this community center problem and he wants to talk about the rats, so we get going on. Didn't know the wizard needed a side hustle, but hey, I am not judging. We're the main character. Let's solve this big issue that the mayor clearly didn't want to. So let's head down where Marnie's place is. Go left and down, and then over there is the wizard's tower. Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let down your hair. Oh, wrong tower. Hello, purple man. I hear you have a solution for my problem. What's that? Gasp! A rat! Well, he's kind of cute. Wait, you're going to go check it out for yourself? Wait, what the? Did, what kind of disco pose was that? What What do I do now? Do you, do you have magic mushrooms? Christ! Oh, my God. The wizard says that Junimos won't talk to him and he doesn't know why. Ponder, ponder, ponder. Sniff, sniff. Good soup. Bro, what was that expression? Was that a weed? Come here. Um, I really don't want to when you have that expression. Haley, Haley, where is your common sense? You can say no and leave. You know, get on with your day. Bro, did I just drink a weed? <laughs> wow, forestry. Wow, thanks. Didn't want to go on a trippy for a minute, only to be kicked out. <laughs> I, I mean, should I really be alone in this condition? Yes? Alright, sure, because drinking some weird forest potion from a creepy purple man is perfectly normal. Okay. Now we can return to the community center and we can read the golden block scroll thing to see some cool bundles. And the theme here is foraging. Hmm. Each season will have their own selected, which will make it an easy bundle to complete. So you can finish these foraging bundles in the first year for sure. Like in this playthrough, I was able to finish the spring foraging bundle within the first day of starting this little thing, giving me some spring foraging seeds, which can be planted in the garden and sold for a bunch of money. Profits, baby. Once a bundle is fully completed, the room will be restored and you will get to see a special reward like fixing up the greenhouse on your farm which will allow you to plant any seed from any season in it. A big tip I want to give you is heading to the left of the forest, you know where we went to the wizard's tower. Um, on Sundays and Fridays there will be a traveling cart which sells a wide variety of items, most of them being needed by the bundle so it helps you get ahead where you can, just you know, you might be a little broke for a while. All right, Minecrafters, when you get brave enough to head to the mines, it's up in the mountains over to the right by Robins. You'll be greeted by a pirate, Whereboat. He's Marlin. He's not like any other characters. You can't have a relationship with him, you know. Ya nasties! <laughs> anyway, he runs the guild and warns you that there will be monsters down in the caves. Harvest Moon wouldn't make me fight for my life. What the fuck? Tuda, busted at sword. Prove yourself. <laughs> a tip for proving yourself, leave everything but your pickaxe and weapon and some food in your inventory. Since you start out with a small space of inventory, keep track of your supplies and health bars. Don't be afraid to dip, because if it gets to 2am and you're not in your house, you're gonna get robbed. And guess what? It's still gonna be your fault! Because people stole your shit and they want to make it sound justifiable. So keep track of your health and inventory and time. Um, I guess I'll insert this now as an editor's note. While reading the wiki to make sure I was <laughs> saying the right thing, I found that if you lose your items, you can head over to the guild where Marlin runs things and use his item recovery service, which will recover one of the lost items, but for a little fee of how much it would cost for that item or stack of items. Unsellable items will be free. Um, and if you buy them back, they'll be mailed to you overnight. So, I mean, that's nice. I only passed out once and that kind of traumatized me, so I never used it. Uh, <laughs> I never let my character do that because I never got over the fact that I had a prismatic shard and some black slime decided to choose violence, so I never knew this. So yeah, you learn something new every day. 
Now, since I'm practically a veteran at this game, of course I have some strategies for killing them monsters. For anything that really moves to attack you, try and push them into a corner. It's easier for you to slash fast without the monster attacking you. For slimes, I found this works really great because their main attack is jumping at you. So if you just put them in a corner, they don't have time to move and that gives you the opportunity to murder them really fast. For anything that flies towards you, really just listen to the sound of them coming and make sure your character is facing them before striking. Then hit them before they hit you. It takes a little bit of practice, but um, for me, I imagine like a one block um, <laughs> circle around me and once before the monster hits you or gets in that spot, you smack them, you know, just hit them before they hit you. <laughs> for the crawling bugs or anything that really crawls, just kill them because, you know, just spam it. Spam the thing. <laughs> Otherwise, when in doubt, spam the hit button and run for the ladder. Man, I almost forgot to include this only because <laughs> I really thought it was pointless, but let's just talk about it. The festivals. <laughs> um, each season has about two festivals. Spring has the egg festival where you compete with everyone to find eggs. Just be Abigail by finding nine eggs and win a prize. With the flower dance where everyone gathers to watch all the young singles dance it up. You two can join by asking one of the young singles to be your partner. Just make sure to have about three hearts or else you'll be awkwardly rejected and have to watch from the sidelines. For the summer season, you have the luau where Mayor Lewis invited the governor and to impress him, we give him a potluck soup. Lewis, that can't be why we're broke. Smit whatever you want into the bowl. If it's higher quality, you know, produce usually does really good. The governor will love it and the townspeople will like you a little more because somehow they know it was you who ruined or made their soup great. In the fall, there will be an action-packed Stardew Valley Fair where you can enter a showcase and earn some points. Show off what you've been doing in your spare time. You can play a target shooting game, a fishing game, a chance game, or just buy your points for some gold. But even cooler, you get your fortune read. Before you leave, make sure to get a free supply of survival burgers provided by Gus. For free! And Spirits Eve is basically Halloween, where you can go through a maze and find a golden pumpkin. From what I've read, this is a university, university, universally loved gift by all the characters. So you can cash in some extra friendship points after being brave enough to trek through the maze. Or, you know, sell it, because profit, baby. Winter technically has three festivals. First is the Festival of Ice, where you can ice fish. You'll need to catch about five fish in order to win the competition. Then we have the Night Market, which takes place on the beach for three days, where you can buy some neat items, watch a mermaid sing, and go deep sea fishing. Unlike the other festivals, the beach won't be closed during the day during this festival. Um, then at least, you know, you can go foraging if you want, and then not start anything, or get the warning like, it hasn't started yet, we're still setting up, just wait. <laughs> And then we have the Feast of the Winter Star, so basically Christmas. Mayor Lewis will send you a letter a week prior with some name listed as your secret Santa for the festival. So bring something or you will look bad. You'll also get a present yourself for a secret Santa, so that's nice. You're included and you know, it's not just one-way friendship. Thanks, game! For most of these festivals, Pierre or some other shopkeeper will be selling items related to the season that you can't really buy anywhere else. So I guess save up your gold in case you find something you like or, you know, there might be strawberry seeds! Profit! Ooh, so I think that about covers for the basics of your first years on your farm. Everything else kind of comes to you, is explained, or is just, you know, common sense. But if you're ever struggling on finding a fish, where to get items, what a character likes, etc., you can always consult the Stardew Valley Wiki. There is no shame in it. That's how I got so informed, I guess. I read that wiki every day. <laughs> Um, I wanted to mention a few things I thought about while starting a new playthrough for this game. Um, just some thoughts that came to mind I just wanted to mention, you know, just for funsies. This is a bonus. Bonus stuff. If you knew me intimately, which I know you don't, um, you'd know I was raised on the Harvest Moon games. I'd watch my mom play the first game on the GameCube, then she'd get Tree of Tranquility for the Wii, and I took over her save file because I didn't know what adult things would keep her away from this game. I mean, come on, it's great. And now my favorite game is Animal Parade. It's my favorite of the series. You can't convince me otherwise because I haven't played anything else. <laughs> um, from playing those farming RPG games, I kind of already knew the basics of what this game would entail. 
Where Stardew Valley beats Harvest Moon is the character's customizing option, where you have a character that you can play and actually feel like you're represented in the game, and the abilities to customize your farm how you want, while Harvest Moon kind of gave you a generic design for your character, basic layout for where your farm and coop were going to be and where your garden was. But where Stardew had me a little disappointed was the lack of outfit customizations. You know, like for the flower festival or when you get married, you don't get to change your clothes to look like the other characters or even look nice during your wedding ceremony. You're stuck wearing your farming clothes unless you unlocked access to a sewing machine and some materials to make an outfit. Where in Harvest Moon, you get to wear a really pretty dress or a nice tux during your wedding. And this kind of made me, as a player, feel left out of the game. Like, I wasn't immersed because I didn't look like the other people. It's like <laughs> those cutscenes where you get to customize your character and you look so out of place. And sure, it's a little funny, but then, like, the people who really love the game, they just like, oh, wow, that's a little bit of a letdown. Um, I know this is a popular complaint, but I just wanted to put it out there, you know. I don't like sticking out like a sore thumb like that. Something that came to mind with this, it could be corrected maybe using a mechanic as like, you know, the same as the character creation where the text would be like, it's your wedding day or it's the flower festival, what should I wear? And have some options that cater to all players and the event they are attending, you know. The girls can wear tux if they want, the boys can wear dresses, or it can be mixed and matched. And then like, it just be more suited for the occasion while still giving the player the option to customize. Otherwise, I think a solution for that would just be using mods for the PC version to kind of fix that. Um, I'm using the PS4 version because I'm dumb and, you know, nothing wants to work. <laughs> Another thing I want to steal from Harvest Moon is the children. That, that doesn't sound right. Um, in Stardew Valley, you can name the child, toss him in the air, then pat him on the head to show you love him. They don't talk. They look generic with the brown hair and the pink or blue onesies. In Harvest Moon, I had to shut my baby up by holding them or shaking a rattle in their face. I had to show off my kid and then, you know, when they got older, they got to work on the farm or they went to school. And they usually looked like or acted like a mix between your character and the other character you decided to end up with. Um, another small thing I feel like kind of relates to my previous problems is that you as the farmer lack inclusion. Like, Everyone else has birthdays, where's ours? For that day you designated for your birthday, maybe villagers could give you a present if you talk to them for that day, you know, if you have three hearts with them. Or there aren't any birthdays for your children, and, you know, you don't get in trouble for forgetting. And there's not even a wedding anniversary you have to remember. And those ones, I got in a lot of trouble in Harvest Moon because I forgot. I was like, I thought it was tomorrow. Oh, fuck, I gotta restart the day. These mechanics really just make the game feel more personal to the player, in my opinion, which is something I really appreciate with my games. I know I'm super biased by making mention of how Harvest Moon already has these installments in their game and noting how attached I am to them. <laughs> it's just a food for thought suggestion I thought I'd make. Um, I know it's a popular opinion or criticism of the game by lots of people who play it already, so I just thought I'd add my voice to the little shouting match. <laughs> Sorry. Anyways, that about covers it all. This video is getting pretty long, so thank you so much for sticking around this long. I hope to make a part two about, you know, finishing the community center, unlocking locations, and a basic guide to married life. And, you know, a whole lot more. Um, if I didn't answer a question you had on your own playthrough, please leave it down below in the comments, and I'll make sure to address it with a part two video. Or part three, or part five, or part 70. <laughs> And if you're down there already, you could, you know, kindly leave a like on the video, double check if you're subscribed to my channel, that would be much appreciated. And um, I also wanted to mention I started streaming on Twitch, you know, started doing Stardew Valley, we're going to make the best farm in the world. Um, we're pursuing people, we are going to get everything done in the wrong order, I think. Um, it's more of just a what happens in the moment thing. Good vibes. If you want to stop by, I'm trying to stream every Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday. Um, you know, just one of those days I'll be streaming. There'll be an announcement on my Twitter, my Discord, or on my YouTube community page now. So if you wanted to check that out, I would greatly appreciate it. Um, I hope to bring you more videos soon. I love you but so much, and I hope to see you in the next video. Bye-bye!